All right, everybody, it's Ross the Fig Boss. Today's video is gonna be quite interesting, especially if you caught yesterday's video or the last video I just put out on lignification of fig trees. Um, it's now months later after I published that video. And why I wanted to put this one out is because in that prior video, we talked about the levels of lignification our fig trees achieve and how that correlates to what temperatures they can withstand, what winter temperatures, winter lows, they can withstand before they will uh, take some damage. And uh, we also talked about really, I think the, the main message of that video is the more water in your soil, the more your fig tree grows, right? Water is the on or off switch of the growth of our fig trees. So if we can slow the water down sometime in the summer, uh, that will give our trees enough time to lignify properly uh, so that they can withstand lower temperatures in the winter. Um, it is, you know, approaching, we're now approaching the end of January. Uh, we have about a week, a little over a week left. And um, so far, you know, this is the, this really in the Philadelphia area, is the coldest time of our year. So, uh, you know, the end of January to the middle of January, typically this is when you see the coldest temperatures we'll see all winter. So now that we've seen these really cold temperatures, um, in fact, you know, not too recently actually, it got down to six degrees Fahrenheit. And you can actually see that all of my, my in-ground trees, I didn't protect a single one of them. Um, I was actually kind of thinking that we wouldn't really see anything below 15. It really was quite mild for a bit. Uh, then we started to see a little bit temperatures a little bit below 15. And then I said, uh, forget it. I'm kind of too busy. I'm thinking about other things. Um, you know, figs just were, have not been on my mind. Um, and I just didn't go through the process of protecting them like I, I wanted to. You know, what we were going to do was bend these branches down and we were going to stake them with these long uh, metal stakes I have and keep them down along the ground. As you can see with some of these branches, we've already bent them over and they've stayed actually into the ground. And then we would cover them with mulch or actually this year, my main intention was just to throw a tarp over top and offer them some sort of protection this winter um, in that form. Keeping them closer to the ground, obviously is gonna keep things a bit warmer. We throw the tarp over top, that's gonna definitely help keep things a bit warmer than if they were just fully exposed as they are right now. So again, now that we have seen these winter lows, we talked about lignification, what do the trees look like? Now that we've seen six degrees Fahrenheit, what does the damage look like on these trees? As I said, you know, it's not just enough in that video to have the right variety, but it's also absolutely critical and more critical actually to have the right le level of lignification. And I'll show you why that is. And it's not even actually, we're gonna look at trees of different ages. <laughs> we're gonna look at trees of different sizes many different varieties and this i think just really writes home the point that it doesn't really matter necessarily too much on the variety because if you can get even a variety that let's say has a reputation of not being very hardy if you can get it to lignify well by the uh the fall by the winter then you will have something significant here in terms of hardiness now this is a good example this particular tree was in a container. Um, I planted it in the ground this summer. It received very little water. In fact, it, it was very difficult actually for this tree to produce high quality fruit because it just did not get enough water. I did not go through the lengths after planting it to really sufficiently give it enough water. But if you look at the branches and really like most of my potted trees, this is basically perfectly lignified, uh, very, very brown very hardened at this point. Um, same thing with this tree over here. Here's another example. I did prune some of the, the trees here, um, the lower branching. The same thing with that tree right there. And I can tell you with 100% assurance at this point, we've seen six degrees Fahrenheit. 
which is by most accounts would be a very low winter temperature. Uh, that is a very low temperature for figs. Most varieties won't survive six degrees Fahrenheit. At least you would think. But the fact that this is really, really well lignified, it has really visually has no damage whatsoever at this current moment. Whereas if I look really just right next to it, this is a variety called Golden uh, Rainbow. And you can see up here at the top, this definitely has taken some damage. I'll try to zoom in and show you just what I mean. It's really hard to kind of tell from the camera, but you can definitely see this tip has definitely gotten a, maybe of a different color. It's a bit shriveled up here. Uh, the wood does not look good. And I don't mean shriveled in that it looks desiccated. It, this is a different kind of shriveled than your typical wood that may even look desiccated on the tree. But in actuality, the figs can express that and not really even be desiccated. Um, here is, um, I think this is, uh, what is this? Blanche de Duce Cezanne, if I'm not mistaken. Again, there's damage here at the tips, I imagine. Um, especially on this higher wood, because the higher we go, excuse the camera work, it's been a while since I've made a video, <laughs> but the higher we go on these branches, the less lignified they are. And especially because what I had done in the summer this past year is that we came in here and we actually pinched a lot of the branches. Uh, by pinching them, we then encourage these, these branches, uh, these trees to put out multiple branches. So from the one single stalk, one single trunk I have here, formed four branches from that point. Not only does pinching produce fruits, but it also encourages new branching. And these new branches, uh, as some people would describe as not very uh, good um, for whatever reason, they don't like that when the, the trees produce new branches. Uh, but if it's on an in-ground tree, it's completely different. In fact, they can really produce really high quality fruit on these branches. But the timing in which I had done this in my summer was not ideal. And therefore I had new growth too late in the season and of course it did not lignify in time as well as the branching way down here on this trunk you know this is all new growth this entire thing because i cut the entire the trees back to six to 12 inches the prior season the prior winter so this is all brand new it grew from basically the the ground all the way up to about here where my chest is pinched it and then it put out all this new growth all the way up here at the top, which hopefully you guys can see. Now, it does depend on the variety. So this one here is called St. Martin, which is said to be one of the hardiest varieties in existence. At least that's the theory on it. And I honestly, even though this is not really that well lignified, only very small parts of these smaller, less lignified branches are actually damaged. So I think there is, there is multiple parts to this, right? It's not just enough to have a well-lignified tree. However, even if you had the most hardy variety like this one as an example, and you saw something at zero or below zero, it's very unlikely that you're going to have a healthy tree or a tree that survives come spring. You need to have the combination of both, of a very hardy variety, but What's even more important, I think, for most of us in most people's situations is just having good lignification. You know, across the, across the country, that's just bare minimum, super important. Um, so, you know, it really does depend on which tree we look at. Um, some of them are showing more damage than others. Uh, it's really strange to even see uh, what looks like a lack of damage completely on some of these because if you looked at them um, you know just a few days ago shortly after that six degree low they looked way worse than they do now and we won't really know 
100% what these trees are going to, you know, if they are going to survive or, or what the extent is of the damage until really the spring. Um, you know, we still have actually more winter lows coming in, but it's not, I don't think it's going to get below six. We are seeing in the next few, next week or, or 10 days, you know, things at around 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but I don't think we'll probably get below 10 again. And, you know, this is just rather interesting um, to kind of look at these trees and compare them. And, and also, you know, does pruning matter? Because I think pruning does play some sort of part in this and that if we were to do more heavier pruning or some level of pruning, um, I, I do believe that in some way, because these trees are largely unpruned, especially this upward growth here that's not as lignified, I do believe because it's not pruned, there is something that is innately protecting them. Um, this uh, La Magdalene here really doesn't look very good. Um, and that one to me just didn't seem to have lignified all that well. We did also mention, by the way, this one, yeah, this one's showing lots of damage. It looks better than it did. As I said, some of these varieties looked way worse the other, uh, the other day, but you can see how this upper growth here really is just, oh, you can even tell. I mean, that's just snaps like that. So that's not good. You could see how actually there's green in there, but whatever is damaged cambium wise will die um, come spring. It will not be, this will not be green. And in the meantime, it may actually seem like maybe the tree is alive or the tree is doing well. But if there is actual damage on the wood, you will eventually see it come spring um, because we still have much more time to go. Now, what also I think is a bit interesting, as I said, is the pruning at the top. Now, if I had pruned, like I said, I do believe these trees, these, these less lignified branches would have been way better off and I would see a lot more damage on them. Now, what about this older wood that is maybe not older, but it's definitely, uh, you know, more lignified, it's thicker. Um, even though we did prune it really hard, like these trees in the front to six to 12 inches. Well, this one here is totally fine. You know, uh, I don't necessarily think, I think pretty much across the board, even though it was six degrees, even a variety back here like Smith, which is said to be notoriously one of the least hardy varieties. Excuse the camera there, guys. I got caught on a tree. But this looks to me like it didn't take really any damage along the the trunk now there is some damage showing up which is very apparent as like you look at that i mean that's that's not good this is kind of hollowed out you could even feel it um now on the thicker wood up here that even though it's not as well lignified it is actually doing quite well so this is really thin super unlignified growth, but we won't, again, we won't know until the spring. Now, the ideal scenario of this was to actually have great lignification and to preserve if we are going to not, um, if we are gonna protect them, which that was the idea <laughs> before I just said um, and kind of forgot about it, but the more tips and growth that we preserve, the more figs we will get next year and, and the earlier our figs will be. Um, so we wanted really to preserve all this growth. I didn't want to really test this, but again, we're learning something, you know, um, just because we, we maybe didn't, things didn't go as planned, um, we can still take from this and learn and make it not a, you know, a total waste in that sense. Now there is a tree, we're going to keep showing you more trees. This tree right here is a Col de Dom something. Uh, I think it's, it doesn't really matter, but Col de Dom Grease, I think. And this guy has just been struggling since I planted it. Probably shouldn't have planted it um, because it, it hasn't done well and I thought rejuvenation pruning it in the ground would really help it along, 
But the growth that it did put out last year was very unlignified, really not healthy. It was a miracle that it even survived. Um, and you can just tell, you know, by looking at the wood right now, it's already dead. It's completely dead. So that there's different levels to this, right? This is the least lignified branches, the worst lignified branches, probably on the entire property, along with maybe a couple other trees, mostly due to the health of the tree and uh, the lateness of when this growth had actually formed. It took a really long time this season for it to leaf out and grow. And because of that, again, that later growth doesn't lignify in time. So that tree just may not make it. You know, it's just the, the reality of growing figs in the ground in colder places is that this cold and I'm grease may be dead. Um, we have to see if something from a lower point, hopefully it's dug itself in enough, it can send up a sucker from a lower point that is protected, that is lignified. And I, you know, because this, this main trunk right here is lignified. So this main trunk is alive, but this new growth is not. So, you know, it's, um, again, it just is proving, I guess, more and more my point. Here's actually, you know, people get all kinds of crazy about, should I plant my young tree? Uh, is the age of the tree matter? Should I grow it out for a number of years? Here's an example of an air layer that was taken off of a potted tree and it's completely fine. Super well lignified. Same thing with that one, very well lignified. Same thing with this one, very well lignified, no damage. Same thing with this one, very well lignified, no damage. Um, here's a bunch of potted trees that were planted in the ground. All of them super well lignified because in, this, in the pot, we control the soil 100%. We control that moisture in the soil, excuse me. So therefore, if we're controlling the moisture in the soil, we're gonna get that growth to stop in the summer. We're gonna get that lignification. We're not gonna to have to worry about the cold nearly as much. Now, so that kind of, I think, really explains everything. I planted even very small trees in one gallon sized pots. By the way, there's trash all over the backyard. It really is not pretty um, because of the neighbor and her trash, just her trash cans blow over and then cause trash everywhere and I had to keep picking it up. But, um, you know, I, I've even planted, by the way, here's, here's actually a good example. Trees that are so small in the ground. I mean, you can barely even see them. <laughs> you can barely even make them out. But there is a tree in there. <laughs> you know, I've wrapped them with uh, this chicken wire to protect them. But there are many examples of trees that were in one gallon size pots, very small, but they were lignified really well. And because they were lignified, it, it doesn't matter that they're young and small. It's only really about the genetics and uh, how well lignified it is. I mean, you, you can probably maybe have a better chance the older it is, but in my experience, it doesn't really matter. And even if it was a young, small tree, well then you just, uh, you know, you, you bury a, a bunch of the nodes lower down on the branch, lower down on the tree, lower down on the trunk, bury that below the soil, you'll be fine because it'll always come back from that lower point. You know, even if it's not as lignified as you want. So for me, I, I don't really care about how old it is, you know, um, <laughs> how big it is. I, I want to really just stress that those are the two main concerns, the, the variety, the genetics of the variety, and really more than any, more than even that is the level of lignification. Um, so yeah. And then here's the greenhouse because I wanted to show you this, um, because I didn't actually, uh, turn the heater on in here. I forgot. Uh, again, it got down to six and it didn't look like it was going to get down to six. At least that's what I was seeing on my forecast. And then I 
woke up even the next morning or even the next day realized oh crap wait didn't it get down to six like i was so not in you know in, in like thinking about any of this that then i had to like look up the history of the temperatures uh and uh you know it was six degrees so that means this greenhouse and with all these potted figs in here we got down to probably around 10. I mean, if we're lucky because this greenhouse is a bit warmer than it is outside, but not by much. And the fact that, yeah, we do have the tarp over top and this, this really kind of helps, you know, keep things a bit more insulated. Uh, still, I, I'm, I think I'd be lucky, I think, if it didn't get below, if it got, if it got to 10 in here, I think I would consider myself lucky. So what this means is, because the lowest I've ever seen a potted tree firsthand experience actually be exposed to the lowest temperature was 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I took a risk that night, it was a Thanksgiving night a couple years ago. And then we learned that actually that was not that big of a deal. In fact, none of the trees took any damage whatsoever. So 14 degrees is like the low that I keep telling you guys is possible. Um, but now I think we have a pretty good case for 10 degrees. Um, the problem is, you know, as I've been stating in, in other videos and other winter videos and even the lignification video, I may have mentioned it a couple of days ago that, yeah, the branches of these trees can handle different temperatures than the roots. So the branches may be good at six degrees, but what about the roots? And that's really, I think, where I may have killed every single tree in here. Um, because again, I, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> it's not something I wanted to do. <laughs> But it happened. I totally forgot about it. Totally flaked. Never turned on the heater. So now we're seeing them at 10. And I think we won't know because the branches are not going to take any damage. They're very well lignified trees. They're also in this greenhouse. Whereas, you know, the potted trees I had in the ground that I showed you, they saw much lower temperatures. So why would the branches in here take any damage? The only thing that I'm going to be able to recognize is come spring or maybe relatively soon. I don't know how long it might take, but if the actual roots of these trees took damage. So if the roots took damage, the, it will not be a visible thing to me right away, will it? Think about it, right? you have root rot and over the course of root rot it takes a certain amount of time for the tree to really start showing signs of root rot on the top of the tree so it's really critical i think to um you know not make any judgments just yet i'm not going to say that the trees are dead i'm not going to say that the trees are alive i won't know until spring is my point but what I am going to do as a precaution, because I think this is really important in case I did lose my trees, is actually to take cuttings because the wood is alive. The wood is fine in this current moment. There's nothing wrong with the wood. If the roots actually did take damage, as I said, we, I won't know for months. So I would rather, rather take the cuttings, have the cuttings as a backup, root them in the spring, just in case for whatever reason i lose all the trees in here you know that we did get down to 10 degrees 14 degrees is the lowest i've seen them i've heard other people struggle at 12. i've heard many stories um maybe in this greenhouse we were just warm enough maybe it didn't even get down to 10. i mean we saw six degrees but how long was it six degrees you know um the fact that maybe the tree was out outside uh, and people have experimented with different temperatures you know maybe that has something is is quite a different experience than having them in this structure in some insulated way or, or something that maybe is uh protecting them so 
maybe I got lucky, maybe I didn't, but that's why I have my pruning shears and a bag here with uh, a Sharpie that I'm gonna label them all and just take a precaution. So that was really just what I wanted to cover today here, guys. You could see a visual of all the trees in the greenhouse. There's quite a few in these trees. I, I, you know, they're important to me. They're gonna produce a lot of fruit. They're also, um, a lot of the trees in here, I really wanted to see them fruit because I wanted to specifically give the trees in here <laughs> um, a head start and a better look on outlook on life so that I could guarantee almost that they would fruit this year to really start to evaluate the fruits. Um, so big mistake, big mistake, but it is what it is. I can't go back in time. The only thing I can do again is take the cuttings. And again, the, the cuttings don't look uh, damaged in any way. So there's not really a visual indicator that this has, that these trees have taken damage. The only way I'll know is like kind of months from now when these branches really start to look sad. Um, and the fact that the branches look sad indicates to me that something lower down on the tree in the roots has taken damage because again, it's a, it would be a very similar phenomenon to, uh, to root rot and how root rot would work. So, all right guys, that's the video. Probably took a bit longer to get that out, but appreciate you guys getting to this point. If you did, I'd really, I would appreciate it if you guys hit the subscribe button, check out our blog, figboss.com. And also, if you didn't see yesterday's video or two days ago when we published the video on LinkedIn, go check it out. It's um, definitely very insightful and a good <laughs> uh, segue into this video. So we'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care.